I was remembering one day, I remembered one preacher who one day he was saying that, you see, when you say, let us, let us give, there are people who say that, I have given my heart. So I say, now one, I want to see one thing, when the basket is passing there, I want to see that heart there, the real heart. <laughs> we want to see it also in the basket. Maybe this is a reminder that, okay, we have given our hearts, but also we need to translate that into actions. Yeah. Otherwise, eh, we might not see, we might need to see the heart. Yes, I want to, I'm told not to begin, but I, I have an idea. I have one idea that, uh, you see, I was looking at the PPC poster there. I saw it's written, there is some Pentecostal church. And to me, I think that's not attractive enough. So you can help me. You want to make it more attractive so that people might, I mean, more people will come to DPC. Hmm? A catching name. Some people are puzzled. Some of them are, some of you are smiling. <laughs> but you want a catching name. And for me, I want to suggest one name. Why don't we make it the Islam Christian Power Station? <laughs> I think that will be more catching. If you have a suggestion, you can bring the name to me. Yes, we worship the Lord in the spirit and power, not truth. Eh? Okay, as people are still going there, I want to tell you one story. One day, there was one time when I was in Mwanza. I lived in Mwanza for some time, so you will hear so many stories from Mwanza. And then, there is something that happened that which was a bit not very good. There were two sisters who went somewhere to worship. And they entered there, they were told, okay, now, if you're coming here to worship, you are not supposed to be here. You are supposed we worship here, but we don't come, we don't enter the sanctuary with clothes. So you have to take your clothes out. This is a true story. Something that happened, I think it was in year 2000, if I'm not mistaken, or 2001, something like that. And when they entered, so they were, as they were going further and further, they were stripping their clothes until when they entered where they worshipped, and they, when they worshipped, they didn't have any clothes at all. When they came out, they became blind. You know that, that, I don't know, some of you might be guessing what is that. It's called, uh, I think there was a certain region called, uh, they worship Lucifer. And when they came out, they were completely blind. And they belong to one of the, for me I could say one of the sound denominations in Tanzania, Pentecostal Church. But they were wondering, why did they go there eh, to worship Lucifer? So they were asked, why did you go there? They said we were promised money and so many other things. And when they came blind, so the church said, okay, now, what should we do? We shouldn't stop, I mean, we should stop being judgmental. Let's pray for these people. So they fasted and prayed for two days, I mean, for two weeks. After two weeks, they recovered their sight. Then, I want to tell you also another story. There was a policeman. Hey, in one of the movies that I watched. I watch movies, okay. Some of you are surprised that even pastors watch movies. We do watch. And that this policeman, in the night, used to do all kind of evil things. He breaks people's houses and steal. And then in the, in the morning, because he was in he was a high rank police officer. People would come and explain problems to him. You know, there is so and so and so. There are the thieves came and they are like this and this and this and this and this and this they mentioned. And you know, he knows that it was me who was doing this, you see? And they explain the whole story to him so that he can get helped. But you know, what does that mean? He said, now, wow, now I can know how I can play and maneuver around so that nobody knows what I was, I'm doing. 
So what I want to tell you, brothers, we live in a world that is, hmm? what should I say, use the word? It's a, um, I don't know, I just remembered, you saw the Chinese, previously the Chinese, eh? the Chinese people, they say, if they want to curse you, they tell you, may you live in uncertain days. Hmm? That means days that are, they come with a lot of certainty, interesting days, they used to use interesting days. May you live in interesting days. Hmm? Days that with a lot of uncertainty, and you can't predict things are going. These are the days we are living. And now turn up your Bibles. Can you, can you open your Bibles, please, to the book of Matthew? I hope everyone came with the Bible. Hallelujah. Yes, you are so silent. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Are you there? Matthew 10, 16. The Bible says, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves, therefore be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Let's go again. Just, yes, turn again to Matthew 7, chapter 7 there. You are in chapter 10, now go to chapter 7, verse 15. Are we there? And the Bible says, watch out false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear a bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you recognize them. Then let's go to 20, I mean 21. It says, But ev not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Let's pray. Yes, our loving Father, we want to thank you for this morning. We thank you that you, you're so good. We thank you for the gift of life you have given us. We thank you that you have saved us. And Lord, this morning, yes, we want to come before you and say, oh God, help us to be still before you and leave us holy people in this dangerous and uncertain world, oh God. Yes, we ask your protection. You protect us. I ask that as we go through your way, oh Holy Spirit, speak to us and speak to our hearts, oh Lord. And may our hearts find rest and stillness before you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The message this morning, the title of the message is called Living a Holy Life in a Dangerous World. From the two chapters we have read, I've given this title. Living a Holy Life in a Dangerous World. I've already told you some stories about the generation we live in. By the way, the name I, was, I just told you, I found it in Mwanza. There was a place called Mwanza Christian Power Station. That was a church. And there are more interesting names. Some of you know them, isn't it? Yes, in the morning I was telling the story about one time Esther and I visited some friends in Birmingham. I used to, I used to see them in this church at some point, but I don't see them these, these days. Now they were, their house were, was very close to the church 
In the Bible, it was called the Church of the Seraphim and Cherubim. Yes, I wish, like, if I saw that brother here, I would have asked him, please, can you tell me? Tell me more about that church that was just near to you. <laughs> because it was a very interesting church. So, Esther and I used to ask ourselves, okay, what does this church of Seraphim and Cherubim do? Yes. There are, there are, there are some, some of our brothers here from Nigeria They were telling us that they saw the name, they saw the church in Nigeria. But here, it's not here. Except I was telling the story that in the morning I just heard, you know, these young people, eh? they are very clever. If they want to speak something before the parents, and so that the parents may not understand, they use codes. Hmm? And now FNC, the two fiancés were communicating. The brother was calling the FNC, the sister. Now, I want to come at your home. Can I come? No? So the, the girl spoke in Swahili. Usije kuna makerubi. You know what that, that means. Don't come here, there are, there are cherubims here. And, you know, and she was speaking in front of her parents. And the parents did not get a clue <laughs> what she was meaning. But actually, what she was meaning is that don't come here at home, my parents are here. See? So I don't know if the parents knew that you were cherubim. <laughs> if you don't know, today we have baptized you. Sorry, young people, maybe I'm, I'm telling some of your secrets. <laughs> But this is what happens. But you see, it's a confusion everywhere. People are trying to get names that are attractive, you see? Especially deceivers. Deceivers are so clever, you see? They know how to sugarcoat the poison. So that eh, you don't get a clue of what is happening. There is something that glitters, but inside it's a poison. That's how when false prophets Begin, if you're a false prophet and you begin a church, can you guess what we will do? Yes, you must come with something that is deceptive to people. But you see, you try to make yourself, you are really a, a true prophet, while not. So from these uh, scriptures we've read, today we are going to have only two uh, lessons that we learned from them. Point number one, God wants us to be aware. Jesus wants us to be aware that he was telling us we are living in a dangerous world. We live in a dangerous world. That's a point number one. And very interestingly, those dangerous people are very religious. Very religious people. And if you read the context, you come to understand that Jesus was speaking about religious leaders, the Pharisees, and also, as you mentioned, as you read, also the prophets. The prophets are supposed to be people who will bring people back to the covenant with God. That, that was a function of the prophets in the Old Testament. But in this case, they are not. They are not interested with the flocks. They are only interested with some of their stuff, their own stuff. And I think, hope some of you know, the false prophets these days, what are they interested? For me, at least, I have noted two common things that I hear every day. Every day I hear about a false prophet, I'll know someone will come something will have to do either with sex or money. Those are the two things that are common. You know, so and so, I went there, you, especially the sisters will come. Oh, you know, so I went to prophet so and so, and he told that he's going to cleanse me, but he slept with me. Those are the common stories these days. Or someone, will, you, we see prophets coming with those, eh? They come with those. There are ways that you maneuver so that you get money from people, you see? There was one time, I think it happened, it was either in Nigeria or so. There was one pastor who promised, he had, he had, the pastor had three cars. And he promised to this guy who had one car. He said, he said, the Lord says that you should give me your car. If you give me this car, in six months, you're going to have a Mercedes Benz. That was the Mark II car that he said that the Lord has told him to take them. So the Lord had told the pastor that, yeah, this guy should give you the Mark II and then after six months, I'll give him the Mercedes Benz. So this man stayed for six months waiting for the Mercedes Benz. And the Mercedes Benz did not come. And then a year, no Mercedes Benz. And then after a year, he quitted going to church. And so his uncle found him. Why are you not going to church? He used to be a very vigorous believer, a happy guy, you're serving God. He said, You know, the God is a liar. I mean, God is a liar. Yeah? I can't go anymore to the church because God is a liar. But is God a liar? This uncle said, No. God is not a liar. What does, what does he lie to you? He said, you say, he promised me a Mercedes Benz. 
You see, I gave the mark to, he said I should give them the mark to the pastor and then after six months I'll have the Mercedes Benz, but I don't have the Mercedes Benz. You see, you know, I don't have a car. So the, the uncle told him, that's a problem with your pastor, it's not the God. God has got nothing to do with what you're saying. Okay, so what I'm saying is we have so many common stories like that. Yeah, even here in Tanzania, I remember there was one guy who was told, this guy, poor guy, was doing business. He had three bajajis. That's all he was depending in business. And then he met the man of God. He said, you know what? God is saying, give one bajaj. He will bless you. And then he gave up the other one. And then he waited. There was no real blessings. He said, when he met the guy again, he told him, you know what? You give the second one. You will see the real blessings. And then he gave the second, and then he didn't see any blessing, and he said, you know, you know what, now it's time to test God, give the third one. <laughs> he gave the third one, and then he became so poor, he was desperate. You see, this is the work of the false prophets. They are there to make sure that God's people get paralyzed, discouraged, and they leave worshipping God. Now, what I actually want to appeal to you, brothers, as we live in a dangerous world, that trust in God and know in His Word. And also, that's why Jesus is even mentioning to us, giving us some clues. Watch out about these people. They are dangerous. Yeah? The word they use is wolves. Trust in God. Stop trusting in people and some maneuvers. Trust in God, and God is good. That's why we are singing here this morning, that in the stillness of who you are, Yes, God, I'll trust you. That you know my name. God, you know me. You know everything about me. And I can trust in you. When people stop trusting in God and believing in God, some people think that they'll start believing in, they start believing in nothing. No, it's much even worse than that. When people stop trusting in God, they start believing in anything. That's why they can be told even those cheap stories in the street. And they believe. Okay, the second lesson that we are supposed to learn this morning, and this is the last one, is that God wants us to be ships, but ships with blended attitudes. You know, it, we hope we understand what does it mean to blend. You blend things together that are different. Ships have some good qualities, but they have some weaknesses too. And at this point, I want to look, you know, we are told, I think, if you read it, eh, God is saying, the word of God is saying here, Jesus was saying that, eh, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. So there are two animals here. There is sheep and wolves. But also be shrewd as snakes. So that's the third one, eh? Snakes. And the fourth one is dogs, eh? Be as innocent as dogs. So let us look the characteristic of each animal. Let's begin with the sheep. Mm -hmm. You know something, I'm, I'm a teacher. What are the good characteristics of a sheep? Just mention from anywhere. Humble. Thank you. Somebody is saying the sheep sheeps are humble. It's very true. They are humble. Yes. Let me try to hear some from somewhere. Again. Okay. Yes, sheep are. Yeah? Diligent. Obedient. obedient. Thank you so much. It's, yeah, yeah. It's very true. Sheep are obedient. You know, I kept flocks at some point. When I was in Standard 7, I used to live somewhere in Singida. And you know, I used to take care of the flocks from morning to evening, especially on the weekends where I don't go to school. So we had cows, we had sheep, we had also goats. You see. But the goats were troublesome. And that's what I remember. They, I mean, the cows were okay. And the sheep were obedient. But the, the goats, Oh, my brother. Hmm? You know, they make you mad. Hmm? I remember that I had a friend who used to tell me, Amani, well, if you get children, please, 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 don't give the ghost to your children, to, I mean, to, your, to your son or to your daughter. Hey, they'll, they'll make him run insane. They're dangerous. So, the sheep are being they're known. Another quality is that they are tender-hearted. That's right. Humble animal they are So welcoming. What are the weak qualities of a sheep? Yes, 
they are foolish. They can be foolish, you see? Eh? They can be vulnerable, you see? They can hang around danger without knowing <laughs> that there is danger here. They can be vulnerable. You see, sometimes they can be so naive, is that right? Those are the sheep. Okay, what about the wolves? The wolves that I know, at least I have, I've ever seen or whatever, I know in most cases they walk in groups. Yeah, is that right? Yes, but you see they are dangerous and ferocious. And even lions fear wolves. Mm, you know, they are very small animals. But eh, even lions fear, you see, because for them, they can, they can, <laughs> they can eat you alive. Yeah, you know, the lion will eat you while you are dead, but not a wolf. Mm? <laughs> They will eat you while you're still living. Mm -hmm. Someone passes with a meat, whoop, another one goes with another one, and there are like 20 of them. Mm -hmm. So, by the time you realize, you know, it's very painful if someone is eating you without killing you. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I think the, the lion is so generous, you see? <laughs> At least he's, he makes you meat after being, after being, after dying. So that's how they behave. They are dangerous and they attack persistently. Don't think that if they go the first time, they will stop. No, they will come the second time and the third and the fourth. That's why even lions feel them, I mean fear them. Now we have the snakes. Yeah? You see, the snakes are, I don't know, the Bible says that the snake is, they are all the serpent. They are clever. Is that right? They are wise, they are deceptive. They know how to maneuver stuff. But they are shrewd. You see, they mean business, they are tight-minded and offensive. They also sense danger. You see, a snake, I have never seen a snake that doesn't, doesn't sense danger. They always sense the danger, always. And whenever that they, see, they think there is a danger, they attack. Yeah, so they are, the good quality is that they are wise and prudent, but also, and tough-minded, but they are weakness, main weakness that they are dangerous and poisonous. Okay, I'm just mentioning the characteristics and then we shall see hey, which ones should we copy and which ones we shouldn't. What about the doves? I think we know the doves. The doves are innocent, but that means they are harmless. You see, they have got no bad intention. I mean, they have got no bad intention whatsoever. No that intention of harming somebody. Nothing like that. You see? They are loyal as well but they are extra sensitive. You see, they make security their preoccupation. Mm? Even if you show a sign that, oh, maybe um, I just want to scratch myself, the dog will fly. They think you want to attack them. And I don't think if Christians, this should be a good quality for them. They are harmless bird, they avoid danger, but also sometimes they can be deceived. Okay, now, from the sheep, I think being obedient is a good quality, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's a good quality. And also, being warm and peaceful is a very good quality. Christians are supposed to be like that. We are supposed to be tender-hearted and welcoming. You see? But that's why I think Jesus was saying, you guys, you should be... You should be... shrewd, I mean, you should be as shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. You know why? The sheep, they can be foolish. And God doesn't want us to be foolish. He wants us to be sensitive. He doesn't want us to be naive. So don't be an idiot, you see? If there is danger, run away. I don't know, for some of you in, I don't know, I don't know how the apostle begins, eh? When he says, you know, I, I know that there was one guy who used to pray with ladies. All the time that he prays with ladies, he wraps his arms with them and he prays with them about 15 minutes, 20 minutes with them, hmm? all the time. And I was wondering why he was doing that only to ladies, not us men. <laughs> So, you see, and sometimes we need to be sensitive with what is happening. Don't be idiots, that's what good thing. Don't become like, don't copy some of the qualities of the, of the ship. We need to be sensitive. And also, Jesus is saying that you guys, you are like sheep. I mean, you are like sheep among the wolves. So be sensitive, don't provoke them. That's why you're supposed to be wise as the snake as well. Be prudent. Don't provoke the wolves. It's dangerous. Be wise. Then you live in a dangerous world. So be careful. 
That's why for the at least the, the, the snakes are shrewd. When they mean business, they you know they are very what should I say? They are they are active. They are not passive. You see, snakes are passive. They can accomplish their missions. Now for us as uh, as Christians, as we live holy life, we should be careful and also active. You know, the more we speak the word of God, the more we do God's work. It's also a protection to us, part of the armory. Part of the armory for us is, see, if you I remember in Ephesians chapter 6, eh? taking the good news, that's part of it, prayer and others. But you see, we're supposed to be active. And as we do so, that's a part of our defense. Which don't be passive all the time. Don't allow welcome attack all the time. But also, he wants us to be like doves, innocent. That means all the time, people should understand that we don't have any intention whatsoever to harm anybody. They can count on our humility, they can count on our innocence. But also, we shouldn't be like, like how the doves are, where they are extra sensitive to security matters. But however, we can copy from them that all the time, you see, you know, when the doves sense danger, they fly away. We should avoid conflicts and attacks that are necessary and avoid danger. And we should be holy. You know the doves are holy. They, they are different. They are good. That's why we should be holy and different from the world. So that we not, may not be deceived. Now let's talk to, let me come to as I I'm about to end. I want to speak one thing about uh, Jesus was questioning us as uh, he wants us to have blended attitude. One of it, as I said, it was that we should be clever and wise. And that wisdom comes from the word of God. We have just read, eh? he was speaking about, uh, for, I mean, from chapter 7 of Matthew, that watch out these prophets. They come in sheep clothing. Be wise to know. Because you see, if they come like a wolf, you will know, you will run away. But usually, they come in sheep clothing, but inwardly, they are ferocious wolves. So be careful. And how do you recognize them? It is there by their miracles and signs. No way. It's by their fruit. There are things that the devil cannot fake. The devil cannot fake his nature. He can imitate a lot of things that we do here. Everything. Perhaps even better than we do. That's right. If you tell him the devil to act like a Christian, I think eh, he would be the best comedian. He can do it better, my brother. He can speak the language better than you do. Yeah? The Christian language. He knows. Hey, pray the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, man of God. You see, he knows it. He knows, they know how old the language. But you see, he can't fake his nature. So, however, whenever that he was going to stay, even the false prophets, you see, wherever they're going to stay, their nature will find them out. That's why you, before you realize, you find that eh, a prophet has slept with 20, 30 girls in a year or two or three. I've seen that here in Darissa. So that tells you that someone has got a different nature. So watch out, because someone cannot fake his fruit. A bad tree, if a mango tree would produce, I've never seen a mango tree producing Maybe apples. No, that cannot happen. It's not possible. So watch out. Let us use fruits. People of the I wish Christians get this message properly. Because we live in a really mixed up world. But also, Jesus is saying to you guys, there are people, many people who are saying, Lord, Lord, Lord. They even do miracles like here. He's saying they are doing miracles. They even drive out demons. But they are not Christians. They are not going to enter heaven. Eh? I think that's the most confusing thing. So people can drive out demons and say, Lord, Lord, but they are not going to heaven. That's something that should, our mind should be able to grasp. And that's why the word of God is telling us, you guys watch out. Now I want to read uh, Matthew 24. Let me please read together Matthew 24, 24. Matthew 24, 24. That means chapter 24 and verse 24. 
And the Bible says, the false Christ and false prophets will rise and will show great signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. Are we together then? Yeah, for, for if you are my friend, you are the one you are one of the people who really you think a sign of a man of God is sign and wonders, you're in trouble here. Because they will show many great signs and wonders. So as to mis to mislead, if possible, even the elect, that means even saints and Christians. Behold, I've told you in advance. This is what Jesus is saying. I've told you in advance. So that when things this, I mean this stuff happen, you'll know. If therefore they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, don't go forth. Oh behold, he is in the he is in the inner room. Do not believe in them. So Jesus is cautioning us that we are not supposed to believe everybody. Don't trust everybody. It's dangerous these days to do so. So we need to have a... That's why here I'm saying that one of the lessons that God wants us to teach us is that we should be sheep with, art, with those blended attitudes that are getting the right qualities that we be, we be sensible, right? mixing even some of the qualities of snakes and doves so that we can survive in this dangerous world. I don't know what, ex what experience you have been passing through. I know I don't know how many people you have met. I don't know because of, I don't know how many <laughs> teachers you have listened to. For me, I hear so many things people coming in my way telling me, yeah, others telling me, I don't know. Some of them, they say, you know, even this sun, you see, the sun is dangerous, it can steal your blessings. Mm -hmm. So we have to do something. Mm -hmm. I have heard so many things these days. And I feel sorry. Sometimes I try, usually even, I feel sorry for Christians who, for that we, the believers these days. I remember during my time when we are getting well, we were, we got to know Jesus Christ. We didn't have this confusing moment. But however, it's our job. That's why I'm here. We should read the word of God and be able to know the times we're in. That we're in dangerous times. There are many people who claim to be people of God, and they are not. And many, most of our people, I think, for me, I think, they don't know. Every time when I tell people about Watch out about this, this, and this, and this, and this. They tell me, Yamani, watch out, these are men of God. Eh? God will curse you. <laughs> but I tell them, okay, what does the Bible say? Eh? You see, the problem is, people say, when they, whenever there is a prophet and a teacher, there is always conflict. The prophet says, this is what the, so the Lord says, and the teacher says, wait a moment, what does the scripture say? You see. So, some of us, perhaps, we are very sensitive, but I think this is what Jesus is saying, watch out. Be careful. Some people, they have lost almost everything. They go there, my friend. I remember, my, I, remember I know this guy. They think to me, he looked to be a very smart guy. But I don't know how he lost his sense that day. You know, he went somewhere and he was told, now, you see you guys, the Lord, we want to give to the Lord. And today, everything that you came with, eh? you, just, you just take your money to the pockets, all the pockets, and get everything that's there. You see people of God, Mm -hmm. And you know, because we are sheep, he's taking advantage that we are sheep. So take everything, eh? and also any wave. Eh? I don't know if you've seen the wave offerings. <laughs> so take everything. You know, he, he, he took, people take everything. And after a short time, people start crying. See? I'm not saying you guys, I believe in giving. And I know that God blesses us a lot. And that's why, for example, God will bless you for building. But Christians should be sensible. Don't give money to anybody. You see? There are these give to people that we they are not even accountable to anybody, you see? That's why they're using the money to destroy our our people. They're the sisters or other people as well. Mm -hmm. Some of them we are even homosexuals. If you have not heard. See, they have they go around with a lot of money, no accountability, nothing, you see. And people just give. God is not that blind, see? We can be blessed when we give with our heads on. When we do God's work, like what we are doing, God will bless us. 
not necessarily when we give the apostle that we don't know that he appeared that day, he was speaking a very good language with very good words. In the morning I was saying that there was one guy who came, he's a prophet here in Dar es Salaam, and he went to, I think, in the regions there. He was telling people that, you know what, God has said this year, everyone should give 50,000 to me and you'll be blessed. Hallelujah. So he, he was going to different people, different people, different denominations. Perhaps some of you know him. He was collecting 50,000 everywhere. You know, sometimes I go to regions and people tell me, he was here taking the 50,000. In another region, he taking the 50,000. So people, some people believe that if they give the 50,000, that's when they're going to have be blessed that year. And they give it to him. We should be careful. We should keep our heads on and know, really, and know how to differentiate the true prophets from the false prophets. We have known some of the qualities, and I wish, as days go, we'll learn even more. The problem with the deception is that it's so powerful. So powerful. Those people, they use some, some maneuvers. I remember one time, I don't know, I was telling someone a story. That I, you remember one time, it was in London, and I met this lady. She was, an, uh, she was a girl from Israel. She was selling, I think, some oil from Israel. I don't know if she was telling me that, okay, you know this oil that can do one, two. She was telling me about the oil, what the oil does. And I listened, I listened, you see. And sometimes, many times, she likes to touch. You see, she will touch you. And every time she touched me, I think like something will come up in my mind, like going and I'm wondering, okay. And when she touches me, she starts telling me, you know what, can you give me your contacts and your address? And I'm asking, wait a, wait a moment. You are selling this oil. What has the address got to do with your oil? Hmm? <laughs> you see? I was, Esther was waiting for me, I was going somewhere, we were going somewhere, you know, we were just changing, I mean buses, and I think we were going to east of London, and it was, it was so amazing, that, that when they realize that you need that, when they, whenever they touch you, there is something that happens. Now, some of us, if you are not liberated in your mind, also, and you are not sensitive to the spirit, you will go. You will get so many prom promises from what the world does, so you give money, and I thought she had some powers, definitely, because whenever that touch goes, like it touches, pop, something goes in your, in your mind, and we have to watch out. Many times I've heard people, you say, drinking milk, I mean, they are drinking, not milk, they are drinking oil from Jerusalem, from wherever. Mm -hmm. They drink so that they can, like, I don't know, others for healing, others for blessings, you see. Others these days, they have the doctrines of, I don't know, we have so many doctors, people have doctrines of claiming cars and whatever. Yeah, I had a brother from Nigeria who used to warn us. He said, I want to warn you, some cars have alarms. So my brother, in some of the areas, maybe you better claim in this church context. If you go there in the town and claim them, the alarms start going out. By the time you explain to people that I was praying, <laughs> You'll be in trouble. <laughs> Maybe you'll be in police cell. <laughs> because they'll see, they'll, they'll wonder, what are you doing in this person's car? <laughs> so, yes, we should watch out. Now I want us to sing a song. The song, song we have been singing, eh? In the stillness of who you are. And as we sing this song, please, you see, many times we become vulnerable because we have problems. It may be needs, different kind of needs. That's why we run here and there and we succumb to these wolves who destroy our lives sometimes. Now, as we will be singing this song, please tell God, God help me. I want my heart to be calm and still before you. There is nothing that you can do for me. God can heal us, God can do anything for us. You see, the problem is that most of us, we want instant things, you see. I don't know, I think I've understood, you see. We live in the days when people want everything instantly, you see. When I pray, everything instantly, instantly, instantly. Then I usually tell people that we don't have instant Christianity, we have instant tea and coffee, you see. Sometimes when we pray, we'll have to wait, people of God. And we should learn that to wait upon the Lord. Some of our answers will take time. Maybe because God is teaching us something. So, please, let us learn to be still before the Lord so that we, we are, and know that we are 
living in a dangerous world. If we keep on trusting easily, everybody will be in trouble. Yes, can we stand as we sing this song? In the stillness of who you are.